The dusty radio computer sleeps on its wired frame, forgotten and unused. Its keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. The filaments you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon. Fortress accident en rue de Saint-Gazelin. This is East Insulindian Rep. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Good, thank you. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. One moment. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not bad. Hmm. Any other questions? Good. Please repeat the password. Good. I've unlocked the production schedule. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Really? She just used the same password? Maybe those radio computer guys aren't that paranoid after all. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Thank you and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. With a quiet determination, the printer starts printing, a piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. A black crisscross of letters covers its surface. It's a project report written by the lead producer, Andrew Andy Schott, about Wirral Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and workforce, while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. In its short time of existence, Fortress Accident SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. The first tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 rear, but then came the delays. Eventually, the damage reached 400,000 rear, with only half of the game finished. Four hundred thousand real? Yo my yo, these guys knew how to party. Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Egaunian investor. Fortress Accident employed 18 people, the bulk of the team composed of writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers, sound engineers, a CEO, two marketing experts. And a single overburdened producer who developed a habit of popping Horolidon in the basement to escape his obligations. But on the other hand, their obligations were piling up at an inhumane rate, a rate that could only be amended by Horolidon. 
Why did Fortress Accident have so many concept artists? It didn't. No, definitely not. A few more producers could have come in handy though, especially when dealing with writers, some of whom routinely skip to work because of mental health issues and extremely unprofessional sleep schedules. One of them even managed to steal some valuable company property before skipping town for good. The production schedule depicts the glorious descent into bankruptcy. Not the concept artists. It wasn't even the writers, with their panic attacks and three-hour lunches. It was impossible not to fail. The project was too large, and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. They tried to make a 4 million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. They couldn't. No, you couldn't have. Definitely not. Not a chance. Even then, success remained within an ever-narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discovered the Valley of the Heads. At the 11th hour, the lead designer, Jims Born, Suliswav Jalisa, decided that what Wirral Untethered needed was a secret mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. This place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. The world had never seen their kind before, and might never again. So many, the last count, there were approximately 10,000 heads for 10,000 headless men, all of which could be endlessly recombined. Do you really want to know? There seems to be a calculation here, but it may take a while. The lieutenant taps his foot impatiently, his arms folded tight against his chest. He's dying for a cigarette. Come to think of it, you are too. What if you broke the radio computer? What if it's never going to stop? And, well, yeah, that and the catastrophic data loss. On the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness. Before the Egaunian investors pulled the plug. What is clear is that one day an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Insulindian Lintel front, just as the Wirral Untethered project was being compiled that day. When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service provider, but despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. Mysteriously enough, it seems that the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. S. Lukanen Kilda, 
the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The off-site copy was on-site because there was no off-site anymore. Not for me, not after eight months of crunch. I didn't have a home anymore, so I started keeping it in the basement in the ice bear refrigerator near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. Her former colleagues would agree with you. The production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. Four months later, by an unknown author. I am the only one left and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under too. Slipstream switched to making skis and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right though. Something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinez, all of it. Still haven't got an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinates of the error on the East Insulindian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I have compared the coordinates to a map of Revachon West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is Saint Brune 1147. I am going there to look this thing in the eye. Saint Brune 1147? That's what the street sign next to the church said. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon. Fortress accident en rue de Saint-Gueslaine. This is East Indian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the off-site copy? Good. Please repeat the password. No, that's not it. What does she mean? That's not it. What's the password then? Maybe it's the second part of the light motif you saw on the stained glass window. Good. I've unlocked the offside copy. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Kaching. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Thank you, and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. It sounds like something cracks before the piece of paper starts filling up with pure black ink. Something's broken. Machines aren't supposed to behave like this. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. The paper is soaked with ink, its monochrome darkness spanning from margin to margin. It's odd. Something is obviously broken here. A single speck of white shines out from the shade. For some reason, the printer decided to spare this one tiny dot of paper. Marked by the devil itself. Looks like gibberish. Better get running again. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Nothing happens. The speaker comes to life. Good afternoon. Please repeat. Is this the offset? Good. Please repeat. Good. Ka-ching. Fortress accident. 
Is there any thank you? Tiles on the cube are... It sounds like something cracks before the piece of... Something's broken. Machines aren't supposed to behave like this. The paper is soaked with ink. It's monochrome darkness. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Yes, I got that. What I meant was, what were they trying to achieve with this damn game? What were their ambitions? Because this here looks rather advanced. He has respect and curiosity for this failed endeavor. This is way above your tiny little policeman head. Okay, well, I think. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Through call-in stations, none of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller calling station. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. We just don't have the technology. Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Roleplaying people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the We Were board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... It's too late for that, I'm afraid. Okay, let's keep moving. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? I'm listening. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about roleplay. That's understandable. Fantasies are serious. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seemed to be chronically liberal with their schedules. An accident? I wouldn't know anything about that. I just heard they ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. Well, I did hear them talking at times. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. She sounds almost mocking when she says that. That's what I thought. Because when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about co In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic. And to show up to work on time. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult. It's and so is producing something extraordinary. Something strains her face. Anything else? Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What? I
trap is full of locusts, but they seem weak and unhealthy. A few lie on their backs with their legs twitching. Still, no phasmid. Poor things. haven't left our little Martinez yet. Still running around. Like some kind of cross-country law official. Aye, but don't let it grow too much. This is not the place to settle down. Now, what's on your mind, officer? Yes, what is it?
The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyundar somewhere. This is entirely, completely you. You have found the right books. Oh yes, certainly. Another good sale. It is a bestseller for a reason. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. on the cube are still smolder. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. Yes, what is it? Yes? Thanks. Looks like it's the one. Now I'm going to print it out to see what's left of it. speck of white? That's exactly what I'm hoping to find. Lintel was able to divine the location of the anomaly from this broken copy. 
I want to repeat their calculation, only this time with better equipment. Watch. What an intricate display of failure. The paper gets soaked in ink again. Its evil blackness shining in the light of the mainframe. It looks eerie. This is wrong. Machines shouldn't behave like that. It's the abyss staring back at you. Sona doesn't reply, her hands running over the printout. She's looking for something, for her morning star, eyes scouring the millimeters. Here, I found it. Hold on. Just give me a second. I'm almost... I've never witnessed a programmer work before. Done. I've got it. I found the location of the anomaly. I found the coordinates. <laughs> She's beaming. You can feel it in your heart. Great job. Thank you. Time for a celebratory drink, perhaps. Just a thought. There, in the swallow. Think you can help me again? I need you to go move those water bolts for me. I need to double check my calculations. What an interesting proposition. Truly a task for the intellectuals, solving the puzzle of water bowls. Figure it out? No, I don't need you to figure anything out. I've got a computer for that. Just walk over to the circle and follow my instructions. Move the third bowl two centimeters to the left, and the fourth bowl five centimeters to the right. This should do the trick. What? She only wants you to follow instructions. Nothing intellectually stimulating. In this task, a child could do it. Yes, but you like moving things around. Moving things around is calming. Uh... Come on. It's not about your brain. Even I couldn't figure it out on my own. Can you please just go and move the water bowls for me? Thanks. It's awfully silent again. As if someone turned off the entire world outside those walls. Water inside the bowls stands still. Measurements have been marked down around the bowls, each chalk-drawn line representing a centimeter on the floor. Oh boy, this is going to be good. It moves like a ghost without creating a single trace of sound. This task is an insult to your mental skills. Some water spills out of the bowl, wetting the floor. The lead programmer sends you an encouraging thumbs up from across. Time to run back, or maybe walk. This is a sacred place after all. Yes, what is it? Great. Everything should be aligned now. Miss Know-It-All is hesitating. Yeah, uh, nothing. Now the only thing left to do is to unmute the headphones. If we got the location right, we should then be able to hear whatever sound this anomaly makes. Honestly, honestly, I'm a little scared. I don't know. That's what I'm scared of. I don't know. It could be anything. I mean, what sound does the nothing make? How can you even listen to something that doesn't exist? 
What if silence is only what surrounds it, but the swallow itself is... I don't know. I'm just scared. Maybe it's going to be something terrifying. M maybe it's going to tear the world apart. Like the evil ink that filled the printout, erasing coherence and meaning. Maybe. Maybe I'm just tired. Let's think about this logically. Why would nothing be terrifying if it's, well, nothing? Because it reminds us of death. And we humans tend to think that death is pretty scary. Yeah, you're right. Let's do it. The lieutenant takes a step back. And then, nothing. Nothing happens as Sona Lokanen Kilda presses unmute on her keyboard. Nothing but silence. You can hear some small animal cross the floor in the chancel. It's that quiet in the sanctuary. She doesn't talk. Her eyes closed and brows knitted together in a state of deep focus. One hand cupping the headphone. Damn it! No, of course not. Nothing happened. Let's move on. Despite her fear, she was hoping for something extraordinary to take place. No. No. My hypothesis was wrong. According to this, I should have heard something if I got the coordinates right. Like I said, silence is only what surrounds it. But this... This is just another failure. Silence sounds like silence. That's all it is. You can try on the headphones, see if you can hear anything, but don't get your hopes up. Silence is silence? You're sure there's more to it? This can't be it. You should have a listen. Everything disappears. You are draped in silence like a drowning man staring into his puny little headspace. And then the pressure changes. It feels like flying on an aerostatic, or when your ears pop, or like a subtle difference in the atmosphere, a weather change hanging in the air. What if the sound you're looking for is too low for you to hear it? A better sound system? All right, but where would we get one? Suddenly, a rhythmic beat permeates the walls, causing a small patch of decorative stucco to crumble onto the wooden floor. They should really allocate some renovation funds to this place. No. What they really should do is shut down the disco men for disturbing neighborhood peace. You mean the speed freaks? Of course. The speed freaks. They have a fantastic sound system. And you think they would help me? I guess I could live through a week or two of peaceful coexistence. Brilliant negotiating there, Detective, as always. Sure, let me know how it goes. Thanks, officer. <laughs>